It's another short video about topological spaces, maybe topological spaces part two. Spaces part two. And so um, to get away from my set with just three elements in it, I'll bring it back later because it's kind of fun. Um, let's talk about some sets that we run into more often. So something like, um, let's say, the real numbers is our set X, say. So I'm thinking about the real line. And remember, what is a topology again? So a topology, it is just really, this is some kind of an agreement that you and I make of what kind of subsets of the real line we're gonna call open. So agreement of what subsets of R, and well, X in general, whatever your set is, in my case R, we call open. And so the one that I'm gonna tell you about is how about the subsets that uh, you know contain a legitimate open interval with parentheses, like college algebra? Uh, you could put one of those around your point in that interval or in your set. And so, uh, what's like a more um, formal way to say that? So let's say T is equal to the collection of something like all U. Uh, that's that's a subset of R such that the following happens. Maybe you could say something like for x and u, there exists some number epsilon such that the interval, say x minus epsilon, x plus epsilon, is completely contained inside of u. So to draw your picture, here's the real line, say. And uh, let's say that I've got some something like this, say. Let's say that both of these things together form u. What I'm saying is if you've got a particular x in there, to say that this is open means that we should be able to find some epsilon such that this open interval here, x minus epsilon to x plus epsilon, completely fits inside of u again. So I hope that my picture shows you what that is. So the point then is that all such sets that contain an open interval around each of its points is what we're going to call the open sets on the real line. And so this is exactly what we play with, like if you teach like a college algebra class. So like if you ever called something like a comma B open versus, we'll use this word later on, but like with brackets, A bracket B, uh, we call that closed. We'll talk about what closed means later on, but for right now, uh, this, this, this is uh, supposed to be consistent with like you know, what you've heard the word open used for before. This is it. Okay, so to bring back in uh, my examples, my favorite example, if X is ABC, there's another concept I want to talk about. Um, what does it mean for, how do we compare topologies to each other? And so there's lots of different topologies we could put on this set, and we've talked about a few of them. Something like, say, I'll call it T1. I'll just start enumerating them. Let's say I just put the empty set and the whole set itself. That's a topology. That's great. Another topology I could take is, say, T2. And what if I just made that the entire power set? So in other words, I just take all possible subsets and I say, hey, all the subsets are open. Okay, fine, you could do that too. And I'll take one more just for fun. So what's like a non-trivial kind of topology? So how about uh, empty set X, they gotta be in there. What about just like A itself? So that satisfies my three conditions of uh, what a topology has to satisfy. My point is, any one of these things is fine to put on your set and say this is the topology, that those are the things I'm gonna call open. We can compare these to each other in a way. So the uh, words we're gonna to use to compare topologies to each other is uh, finer and coarser. And so we would say, um, let's say, how does this work? Well, T1 is definitely contained in T2, right? Empty set X are definitely just part of the power set. So T1 is contained in T2. So maybe I'll write it this way instead of say. So T1 contained in T2 means that uh, T2 is finer than T1. So T2 has more stuff in it. That, that's what it means to be finer. More stuff. On the other hand, and another way to say that is T1 is coarser than T2. And coarser means less stuff. So if I look at the rest of these here, um, well, uh, in this case, T3 is also finer than T1, since T1's right there, it's part of T3. So we could write that down. So T3 is finer than T1. 
Uh, on the other hand though, um, T3 is coarser than T2 because, well, empty set X and the, single, the singleton A, those are just three things from the power set. So T3 is coarser than T2. Great, and so uh, in some ways, like the, remember this was called the uh, discrete topology and uh, I'm trying to say that that is like the finest topology you could have. The finest. Uh, and on the other hand, remember this one got a special name. It's like the topology that has the least amount of things possible in it. This is the trivial topology. And uh, if you think about it, this is like the coarsest topology you could possibly have.